Hello, all you friends of the Practice Amp, uh, you budget-minded guitar player, you beginner. Now I'm going to get yelled at again, it's so much more than a beginner amp. But, 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 the lower budget, smaller, cheaper amps are usually beginner amps. I said that on one of the Fender videos and years later I'm still getting, I have this amp and I'm not a beginner, you're so wrong. I get it. But something like the Blackstar ID Core V4, that rhymes, uh, is perfect for a beginner, especially in the 10 watt version, because that's what I have. And I think it clocks in at like 120 bucks, at least the V3 clocked in at 120 bucks. I'm thinking V4 is in a similar price range. I can't tell you about the 20 or 40 watt versions, which are bigger, louder, but I have the 10 and it looks like so. So you can see this is a rather small box and at definitely around 120, maybe 140, I don't know. It's, it's pretty much a steal. Yeah, about that, uh, I uh, just talked to the distributor and it looks like street price might be higher. Uh, I would be hoping for 150, 160, which is still completely supportable, but um, um, MSRP is 220. Hmm. So every time I'm talking about price in this video, just remember, take it with a grain of salt because we don't know where street price is going to clock in. It's not going to be 120 like I'm saying in this video. 120 was the last kind of batch of the V3. So it will be more than 120. Uh, we're hoping not 220. But again, please watch the pricing and then uh, judge accordingly. Thank you. It does not have Bluetooth. So in that regard, it's different than some of its competitors, but I feel in its direct controlliness and you don't really need an app to do anything, it is superior, I would almost say. Okay, let's go. Well, let's show you the back, which you see in the beginning. It's got a nice carrying handle and a plug for the included external power supply. But I think for like 80 to 100 bucks, you can actually buy a battery pack that makes this thing battery powered, which is pretty damn cool. Let's go into the top and I'll show you what it, what it does. What they improved over V3, I never had the V3, but I've watched Andy Ferris's videos, The Guitar Geek, and he did, did a great series on this amp. Um, it had mini USB, which just wasn't up to speed even at that point in time. They absolutely went with the times, and now we have a USB-C port. Why do we have this? Well, A, firmware updates, but also you can completely control it with software. What does the software give you that the actual top of the amp doesn't give you? Not so much, which is great, because that means don't even use the software. It gives you, this has ISF right here, it's their infinite SF feed. I don't care. People say, this is American, this is British. Folks, it's not. American or British, it gives you a little bit of a direction where the mids are, where the bass response is, but it doesn't make this a Mesa or a Marshall. It just is a one EQ knob that kind of shapes the whole EQ curve. If you wanted bass, middle, and treble, you got to call up the software and I will show you that later. Effects, you can switch everything here except for the noise gate, which is pretty cool and that you can incorporate into presets with the software if you so choose. Right now we're on manual, everything I set up is what you hear. If I go into this, now we're actually going through four presets and I'm not only changing the amp model. Now, Whatever is set up is set up and I'm only changing the amp. I already said there's no Bluetooth on it, which is kind of sad because it's nice to pump Bluetooth into an amp and jam with your tracks. Here you would need a cable, which they don't supply. But again, at 120 bucks, uh, so I ordered myself a cable. I sadly have an iPhone. So either you need a lightning to mini jack adapter or in my case, I've got a 15, a USB to mini jack adapter. It's probably not a bad thing to have anyway. And the first cable I ordered, I was an idiot. I just, I put in TRRS, which means tip rig ring sleeve. It's got three of the little ringies, but, um, or sections. 
I clicked on that on Amazon, but then still ordered the wrong cable. So this allowed me to get audio from my phone to the amp, but not record with it. So two days later, I've got a nice and long TRS cable. So this is what you actually want. And this is also TRS. You plug this in, plug it into your phone, and that allows you to stream audio to the amp. If you're using the line in streaming jack right there like so and then you can actually record on your phone and it's not bad at all i tried to jam to my uh, buddy tom james's jam tracks from elevated jam tracks which didn't work on recording the video in the video mode on the phone because then it just fades out the playback from uh, youtube it does work on instagram so if you're actually streaming or recording an Instagram reel. You can jam over anything that you play on the same phone. Absolutely worked pretty damn cool. Quickly, with the USB, you can also do reamping, which means you can record the sound that you set up, a DI recording of what you're doing, so pretty much without any amp, and then later on, send that DI recording back to the amp, set up a different sound, and re-record it. Again, we're talking about a 10 watt tiny practice amp. Is that something you're gonna do with it? I'm gonna say no chance in hell that anyone's gonna do that, but you can. And Andy Ferris for version three of this amp, same process, made a brilliant video showing you how to do that. So please consult that. I'm not gonna be bothered to do that. I did record a little direct sound with the phone and I'm gonna show you how I did that with the setup. And here are the clips in beautiful real format. There you go. Of course, it has a headphone out right there, and the headphone out also has the cab rig models, meaning in the software you can set up different uh, cabs, basic like one of three mics, a couple of cabs. If you wanted a 112, you can do that. If you wanted a 412, you can do that. If you're a beginner and you have this amp, you don't even know what I'm talking about, which is fine, don't even bother. However, the built-in speaker seems to be a an actual guitar speaker it is not full range it doesn't have a tweeter i think which means the cab rig is not going to affect what comes out of the amp the amp sounds the way it does you can switch the cab rig around all day long but it's not coming out of the actual amp which is fine because the way it sounds is great so what did they improve USB-C and the sounds because Boy, 420 bucks might be higher. Are you getting good sounds? Are, are they direct recorded sounds to your phone or with the USB out into your DAW? Are they mind blowing? Are you gonna get better sounds with a good software? Yes. Are they there and you can use it? Yes. It's, it's all there, uh, but you're not really paying for it. 120 bucks, people. What they put into this thing for that money might be higher. It's pretty damn stunning. So the way you do this, go to manual, set up, you're clean, you're bright clean, and there is a difference. You crunch your super crunch or two overdrives. Gain, volume, EQ, ISF. If you wanted bass metal treble, go into the software, as we will do later. And here you can turn on a reverb. Dial in how much or kind of how big it is. This is how much. This is mix. This is how big it is. And then the next reverb and the next reverb and the next. So there's four different types. Turn on delay. Reverb stays on. Four different delays. You want to edit the reverb again. You do this. And turn on modulation. You cannot turn on and off the 
noise gate that you do in the software. This is again the mix for whatever is right now green, which means edit mode. Pretty straightforward, very quick setup of some cool effects. One thing I noticed is the recording out to your phone or the recording out of the USB into your DAW digitally is dependent on the volume knob. It's kind of sad because this would get you a good recording out level, but it's way too loud in the room. Your mom's going to hate you. But then you just switch it to one watt mode, which I did here when I actually went direct because otherwise it would have been way too loud. So you can always go to one watt mode and actually play it rather quietly. Now we're going to get some sounds. I will not put a mic in front of it. That would be asinine. Who's going to do that? Who's going to put an SM57 or some kind of guitar mic right in front of a 10 watt amp? That is not going to get you the sounds. Either you're going DI and the sounds are pretty okay, or you're hearing it in the room. Now to hear it in the room, you're hearing, you're hearing it with the 3DO fake ears. Okay, these are silicone ears. It's called a binaural microphone. Please, from now on, use headphones so that you're actually hearing what I'm hearing in the room. If I was sitting right where these ears are, that's pretty much what you'd be hearing. It's pretty realistic. So put on the headphones, otherwise it doesn't sound right. If you're on the crapper right now with your iPhone, please stop the video, put in earbuds, continue from there. If you really want to know what the amp sounds like in the room. The amp has a tuner. It is fairly basic. Hold in the reverend. And now, hold it in longer. <laughs> there you go. In the middle, it's good. And then there's above and below. It's not the most accurate and fast tuner in the world. But you know what? It's included. It's 120 bucks. Might be higher. The tuner I've got behind this thing is 160, and all it does is tune. It does it well, but you get what I'm trying to say. There's a bit of reverb, and here we are on the warm, clean setting with this Ibanez AZ something. On the bright setting. On the crunch setting, or I would call that a slide overdrive. Of course, you can turn the reverb off. Moving on to Super Crunch. Drive one is really high gate. Mm. 
Let's go to Overdrive 1 and look at the ISF feature. So no, it doesn't do American and British. It is a global EQ that does several things at the same time, which is neat. We put on a delay. Linear. Could be a bit louder for dotted eighth stuff. Okay, um, but here's another one. More analog. Here's the next one. Very nice. Let's go to a clean sound. Here are the reverbs. Room. A little bit boomy there. And here's modulation. I'm gonna assume. Phasery. Envelope filter, beautiful, and that should be a tremolo. Of course, you can turn all of them on at the same time. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the simplicity and the stuff on offer is enough. When I was still teaching years ago, this would have been what I would have recommended for my students to buy as their first amp. The Spark from Positive Grid is a great piece of gear. Clocks in at 300 and most of what you can set up is in the app. And then it's complete overkill for anyone who doesn't know what they're looking at in terms of overdrives and boosts and compressors and amps and caps. It's just too much. This anyone can handle. I really like what I'm hearing right here in front of it. And if you want to practice, you need something for the living room, not spend a lot of money or for your office or whatever. I mean, the leads you can very easily dial in. Check this out. And, and I should be there. I think it's really great 
If that is too loud, you hit the one and then you add really quiet. Impressive. Now let's go into what can it what we well have them. <laughs> let's go into what it can sound like when we plug it in with USB and actually record in a DAW. <laughs> there you could also see the software and the possibilities in the software. I feel this is redonkulous for what you're paying. Might be higher. Yes, you can get the 20 watt version. That's going to be a little bit more. You can get the 40 watt version. I highly doubt that any of them, maybe the 40 in a student band, maybe. I don't, they're not meant to go on stage. These are practice amps amps for at home, maybe actually record a reel with it and go on social media, do a live stream. There are, there's of course op problems with the live stream in terms of like, where's your microphone? That's not going to be there. 
overall, absolutely convincing, great sounds for the money. And I can't think of many other products that will give you that much for the money. It does, they don't give you everything. I skimped out on Bluetooth, which is okay for me. It would be nice, but okay. I'll, I would deal with the cable that you have to buy yourself by TRRS, by the way. There's one thing that is not great. And I feel that the ID Core 4, version 4, is a lot for the money. Might be higher. If you're looking for a very low budget practice amp, might be higher with outputs, headphone, uh, one watt mode, USB, live streaming, uh, an app, all that's wow. Oh, the cap rig only is on the headphone out or the digital out. It is not being heard in the speaker. Remember that. Other than that, hey, come on, this is killer. So check it out. Order it, test it, send it back if you don't like it. Don't trust me, trust your own ears. And I put links below. Please use them to Sweetwater, Anderton, and Toman. That really helps me if you buy something there. Uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Core One Music from Marburg and Blackstar, of course, and Animals at the end. Animals.